What's going on, everyone? Oh man, we got early DLSS 4.5 testing. And no, I've made my videos on it, right? And everybody, thank you for the support. Look, now we thought that the older cards getting it, which I mean, it does make things look better. But I mean, guys, we got some stuff to talk about here. Yeah, early DLSS 4.5 testing reveals drastically crisper details but older gen RTX GPUs take nearly 20% performance hit. What? I mean, I got the 5000 series, but even then, this isn't about me. This is about people who are getting locked out because NVIDIA is doing this crap on purpose, where it's like, oh, we could put the 5000 series in front of you from last year, but oh, guess what? You're not getting your supers this year. On top of that, I'm going to force you to feel comfortable about getting the DLSS, but if you want to be a part of that club, which is also restricted by the 5000 series for people to even get that, which is reduced now, you're gonna take a 20% performance hit. No, I thought the point now is to help people get more performance, but you're not getting that, right? They're just, when it comes to the cards world, what are they doing? They're ghosting you, man. It's flickering, guys. It's not cool. It's like, what's going on here, man? Where's the supers at, right? No, here comes AI again, right? Yeah, I'm getting tired of that crap. It's really starting to annoy me. You know what? Let me let me grab this over here real quick. Uh, I'm, I got to do an NVIDIA on y'all for a second when it comes to the supers. Sorry, they're just not seen. So yeah, going down here, older RTX GPUs will require more VRAM to ensure better visual fidelity. Oh yeah, that's amazing considering how cheap you are with the eight gigabyte of uh, VRAM pools of older cards, right? If you don't have something insane. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, this is an AMD where they give you 16 gigabytes of VRAMs for certain cards and stuff. Even consoles have it with older tech and you can't even get that for newer stuff. Like I've seen some of the stuff like the 5060, some of the 5070, I'm like, why is this eight gigs of VRAM in some of these laptop setups? What are we doing in 2025 with this? And we're talking about last year, but you got consoles uh, dropping in 2020, right? They were using tech a little bit older than that and they have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. That's the thing that I know that people liked about AMD because they were doing more raw rasterization. Obviously, NVIDIA is better, but the problem is, is their damn behavior. And it's like, you know, I've, I'm very worried about people who are looking forward to the 3060 getting that eight gigabytes of VRAM slapped in your face and you're saying, oh, I'm gonna be able to use this, but guess what? This requires more VRAM. Yeah, sure, you get the DLSS 4.5 benefits, which is reduced VRAM uses, but not that much compared to the newer stuff. And it's not gonna be able to make up for that. And I don't know, man. So you guys are gonna have to let me know about your test too, but we got some right here. Digital Foundry also has a nice video up too. RTX 20 and 30 series reportedly require two times more VRAM, what? Two times more VRAM with the latest transformer model based DLSS 4.5, but deliver sharper visuals. It's not worth it. That's like telling somebody on consoles, I'm about to kill your frames even more for this setting. Everybody on consoles and even Mark Sunny said, I want you to think about this on PlayStation 5 uh, resume. It came up guys. It said 70 to 80% of people choose performance. That means that they care about frames more than they do about sharper visuals. So to a lot of people, this update may be worthless because they're not getting a frame gen increase that you would get from DLSS 4 and on that the RTX 5 series get. I don't know, man. With the introduction of the uh, NVIDIA DLSS 4.5, the second gen trans uh, transformer model now takes the place for improved visual quality in games by leveraging the AI lazy slop capabilities of the tensor cores, which I do like, present on the latest RTX GPUs such as RTX 40 and 50. Yeah, I mean, if you have something like 20, I mean, you're kind of like getting the, you're being included, but then you're kind of like, yeah, man, I don't know, man. You guys know what I mean, right? Uh, I had this up on my thumbnail earlier, but even then, when we talk about uh, better triple stability, reduced ghosting, and smoother images, I mean, this is going to definitely help out more for cards that are able to use higher frame gen. Uh, however, DLSS 4.5 supported even on older RTXs, which we know about this. So DLSS 4 and 4.5 will also work on RTX GPUs, but guess what? They're taking performance hits, so they're kind of sitting there like, um... I don't want to take performance hits. And here goes a post right here. Mostly positive reviews. Who's done some tests for you guys that are going to give you results here. All right. Are we ready for here? 
Here we go. Just did some quick and dirty test with DLSS 4.5 Super Resolution in Cyberpunk. And the RTX 3080 Ti, this is the 3080 Ti guys, not the 3060. And not just the 3080, but the Ti version. The performance hit between preset K and preset M. Now I want you guys to think about this. K is, is the older stuff. M is the <clears throat> DLSS 4.5. 4K ray tracing ultra pre, uh, preset. Um, K has 42 frames. And with DLSS 4.5 for the older card, it takes a 10 frame hit which is 24 percent frames per second lost mm -hmm. you see this 1440p ray tracing ultra preset dlssq quality by the way preset k which was before 72 fps average and preset m 61 frames average a 14 frames per second hit now here's the thing if you're if you're the type and i hear me out guys because if it does make a difference, you're like, man, this definitely looks better. I noticed definitely a difference, not magnifying digital foundry difference. And you're like, I'm still getting over 60 frames. I'm okay. Because I'll take that 14% loss because it looks really good. And I can still get more than 60 frames per second. I can understand that. 1440p ultra, no ray tracing, DLSS quality. 108 frames, preset M86 frames. See, at this point, I don't care because 86 frames is a lot. If I were you, it, but this is the... Um, 3080 ti if you're in a 2000 cards i don't know uh so it's not just 20 uh, percent so it's up to 24 percent um so it's up it's up it's up to you guys now when it comes to something like this i don't want 32 frames i'd rather get those 42 that's definitely a difference that's why people choose fidelity in vrr it matters when it comes to here but who's going to do 4 4k ray tracing ultra preset you see what i mean now this right here is the pc sweet spot because you can get a lot of other stuff going on for you <clears throat> And you don't necessarily need all that other stuff. And you can still get your 60 frames, even with the 4.5 addition added in. I'm just saying, that's what I would do if I was in you guys' position. I wasn't using my 5070 or my 24 core processor. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's ridiculous uh, that I got an insane deal for it. I didn't pay much for a swap. Um, but still, though, um, as long as you're getting over 60 frames, who cares? Uh, the human eye is not going to detect it. You may feel it, but. I think that's where things start to get very interesting if you're able to get those settings on DLSS quality. Most people say, hey, I'd rather get the 65, I'd rather get close to 70 with DLSS maybe balanced or something and and have that uh, going. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can do that. What's the problem? Uh, the latest DLSS 4.5 is reportedly much more intensive and can easily reduce the performance by around 20% as reported, as we saw. The 3080 Ti received a staggering 24% performance hit when he ran Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K with ray tracing ultra presets using DLSS quality mode. <clears throat> with DLSS 4.0, <clears throat> the average frame rate was over 40. Oh boy. In DLSS 4.5, it cuts to around 32 frames per second. That's not what I want. At 1440p with the same presets, there's a 14% performance hit which is somewhat lower, but without ray tracing, the overall performance hit now increases to 20%. And going over here, guys, we see here, look at the VRAM usage here. Increased capacity, 87.8%, 96.9%, and 103.7% VRAM usage when you're using an RTX 20 to 30. Now, obviously, when you go to the 40 and 50, the capacity is way lower. But 3060s, think about this. See what they're doing uh and under 50 the capacity is going to be obviously lower and could probably be lower over time uh but what the dlss times three and four i mean you're good the, the frames are so ridiculous it doesn't really matter if you have a 5000 series but what is the majority of the biggest pull that's what we need to look at because those are the most users that are being affected by this of course i could sit here with my one percent and under setup but is that the whole world? No, that's not why I'm making this video. I'm making this video for the mass majority and obviously <clears throat> for everyone. So it says, this is something that other users have confirmed in the thread, including a user with the RTX 4060 laptop GPU who saw a 16% performance hit. It's expected since unlike the RTX 50 series, previous gen RTX GPUs do not natively have the FP4 and FP8 precision. RTX 40 does have FP8, but... However, according to NVIDIA's or NVIDIA's documentation, the RTX 40 series should consume less VRAM with the latest Transformer model than the earlier generations. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Reportedly, the latest DLSS 4.5 will need 40 to 50% more VRAM on the RTX 40 to 50 series GPUs. But for the 20 and 30, you're talking about double. Yeah. So we're seeing this right here. Um, and then when you go over to 4.5, we're seeing that. So right here, we see 75, 80, 80, right? Um, right, 45, 82 megahertz. Just take a look at this. 94 frames per second on the CPU cooling, right? And then we go over here, we see 79, but you're still 79 frames per second. I say at that point, who cares? Um, and obviously you're using more megahertz. Well, actually, no, it's about the same. But uh, temperatures, you know. But what we do see over here is 55... 15 memory and 8,000 megahertz, 5707 and 8,001 megahertz. So a little bit more memory here too. And we see DD uh, D12 right here. Um, and there you have it, 13.3 MS, and this is 10.3 MS. So honestly, the increase in MS is not drastic. Honestly, that's not that bad, considering what that's what that's at. So those who already ha uh, boast an eight. Gigabyte GPU will face some real performance bottlenecks, particularly when they have already impacted. They are already impacted by the lack of FP8 precision used by the latest transformer model. It uses five times more compute. On the RTX 50, it is a, around a two to three percent performance hit. This thing, you're not going to suffer at all. It's really made for that, but you're kind of getting backwards compatibility support, basically, uh, but not at the highest degree since it's too busy on AI. But the image quality benefits it massive. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is ma mainly what we're talking about here. In the 4000 series, you're okay. But 3000 and 2000, oof. NVIDIA's Jacob Freeman confirms that the 4.5 model is five times more compute intensive and only hardware or FP8, such as RTX 50 and 40 series, can fully tackle this resource requirement. On the RTX 50 series, enabling DLSS 4 takes a 2-3% to performance hit with the image quality benefits are very big. For the older uh, cards, as we see through the 20 and 30 series, the results are already shared above. DLSS 4.5 can still have a big impact in games that offer extra performance headroom. If users are already getting good FPS in the 100 to 200 range on RTX 20, 30, 40 series and older titles, then it makes sense to enable DLSS 4.5. Yeah. So the highest MS we're seeing here is on a, uh, right here is, is the 13.81 MS on the 3060 compared to anything else going up to 4k which you don't need to do that you would do 1440p you know unless you just want to i mean that's up to you i can't tell you what to do with your stuff but as we go over here we see how low this is this is very low but up here yeah i mean this is the older models guys it's kind of expected and then as you go down i mean the moment you go here and they're not talking about 4060 we gotta go to 4070 ti and stuff like that i mean it's really good over here but i mean this is a very low percentage so this is not really catering to the masses this is catering to elite structure um, however, if they have a higher VRAM GPU, such as the 2080 Ti, 3080 Ti, the DLSS 4.5 will be drastic better image quality. So yeah, if you're sitting on net, you're okay. As demonstrated by a user who benchmarked a game using his 4060 laptop. So we kind of get the idea here. And he tested it on Doom the Dark Ages and Cyberpunk. 2% preference loss in DLSS quality mode on 5090. I mean, that's 5090. Barely anyone's going to have this. So there you have it, guys. <laughs> here we go with this stuff again. These people are funny with this. You guys going to have to let me know what you think about this. Uh, I mean, at least if you have the 2080, the 3080 Ti, you're going to be okay. But hey, man, who knows how much that's going to go up to and how much that is right now. I don't know, man. You're better off going with the newer stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. As usual, you know what's going down here, guys. Bringing you the truth. Later.